Hi everyone, Ben here. I'd just like to take a moment to thank some of our patrons. Jonathan Walters, Shad Bolling, Anna Malsik, Oliver Tyso, Margaret Peggy Whitfield, April Kluver, Marianne Dupont, Christina Kirkland, Isaac M, Kazimir Stein. Thank you all. We really appreciate your support. If you'd like to join them, go to www.patreon.com forward slash Rusty Quill and take a look at our rewards. Welcome to episode 80 of the Rusty Quill Gaming Podcast. I'm your host and GM, Alex Newell, and with me today I have... Bryn Monroe. Lydia Nicholas. Ben Meredith. And the cavernous, echoing absence. It's so quiet. Yeah, yeah, it's quite quiet. It's really nice. So much less smelly. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, he can still, like, hear these, like, just... He's He's not going to listen. He's not going to listen, mate. (laughs) He has no interest. He's like, I'm not in it. No, I don't think so. I don't think he listened to it when he was in it. (laughs) Oh, I think he listened to the highlight. He's got children and commitments now. So anyway, as a very, very quick recap, yeah, James's character, Bertie, is a little bit dead. Don't miss Bertie. We do miss James. Yes. We do miss James. So, most recent events, condensed. You all managed to defeat the evil necromancer Kafka in the opera at the centre of Prague, admittedly losing Bertie in a fairly ignominious way, and... Oh. And... and. Never do that again. And that was, yeah. all, that was horrifying. That was, that was awful. Uh, that's, that sister. is gonna. I mean, that's clipped. That's clipped the whole way. That's yeah. the whole. <laughs> and uh, along the way, of course, Hamid got converted into an, uh, basically a beast. And oh, then yeah, got returned. That, that happened. <laughs> um, we changed him back. Yet. I mean, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, right. of course, don't forget as well that Sasha is now being healed by negative <laughs> energy instead of harmed. Hmm. That's that's a thing that's happened. <laughs> We've both got exciting health conditions to deal with. And I believe I made tea. <laughs> and I believe that the very last thing that happened was Bertie's magical will was read, and Brutor was named the heir to the McGuffingham oh, estate, <laughs> inheritor <laughs> of the sword of uh, Sir Everard McGuffingham, and basically is is Sir Brutor McGuffingham. Him, right. To all intents and purposes. So I think you mean intents and purposes. Very nice. Very nice. I've drawn a feeling. Oh, you are. You are. <laughs> well. I feel like there's, there's no space to relax now. There's no like if a pun. You know, it used to be if there was a pun there, James would find it. Now <laughs> is, no, is, we have, we to, have to hunt inside air. ourselves. <sighs> 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 Um, like this isn't that. a hole that needs filling. <laughs> this is just the thing that we can now leave by the wayside and move on into grand yeah, vistas. Leave, of it, just leave it to air out. Uh, <laughs> okay, there is definitely a Pomeranian pommel pun somewhere, but I'm just kind of Pomeranian. It. Pomeranian, yeah. Yeah, that'll right. work. Hair, wire hair Any terrier, who? Dalmatian, <laughs> <laughs> Red Setter. I don't know. I'm just putting dog names out, and you can infer the incredibly clever joke Pug. you listener because i believe in you so we're gonna pick up <laughs> this is like a choose your own adventure game but with puns <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're very sorry we're gonna pick up where we left off so <laughs> oh no i told you to never do that again <laughs> so as it stands currently in the room with you is of course uh, marie curie mm-hmm. uh, sigmund freud mm-hmm. einstein's rocking around mm. and they are currently just giving you a little bit of space Oh, Hamid's on a ball on a ball in the floor yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean uh, this, this grieving process is in pretty in a ball extreme. on the floor making the noise that I've been ordered not to make uh, Hamid I'm like, um, sorry mate I, I mean she, she she went doing what she loved right being in in opera well, and then thrown across a room sorry mate Oh gosh! Uh, does it, look, look, okay, okay, does anyone look. know what to do with a crying yes. person? The, the yes. screaming sort of starts to turn into whimpering. Yes, as he has to pause for breath occasionally. So, um, look, and I'm gonna walk up to Hamid and sit down next to him. Say, look, um, I know I haven't known you for that long, um, but generally, death isn't the end. Okay, um, so your sister, she's she's gone somewhere else, but she's not gone, right? So, 
<laughs> and obviously, yes, no, it, 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 it's horrible. And she died in really, you know, tragic circumstances, but... You she, know. she's, you say, she's, she's in the in the afterlife. Yeah, yeah, she is. Like, who, who, who what, what, what does she worship? My, my family's never been very religious. No, no, sure, but like, what, what you know, there, there are other, you know, law, justice, um, artistic integrity, anything like that. Because well, you know, banking. There were, I, I mean, she loved mu- mu- music above ev- 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 everything else, really. OK, right. So, you know, there is a god of music and, and art. And do you think she was a good person? Yeah, she was. <laughs> yeah. But she, she will be... She has gone to that heaven, OK? Oh, Ahmed, Ahmed, ah... Oh. Pats on shoulder awkwardly. There's a very, very tentative knock at the door. Ignore that. Gonna, yep. gonna desperately go to. That sounds like a distraction, <laughs> right? Oh, I'll get that. Oh, look, it's, yeah. Oh God, strangers. All right. <laughs> knock in a hard place. <laughs> Hello, door. Do, do you open the door? Yes. Okay. As you open the door, stood in the doorway is an extremely tatty and panicked looking young man that you remember is the one who was called Gideon he was here he was the assistant to Einstein he was helping Einstein back up at the tower Alex Uh, you're a monster (laughs) oh um right I'm really sorry I've I've got to deliver a message I'm really sorry okay what is the message Uh, uh, well I I, I, uh, is it for he's kind of waving to Curie and kind of mouthing and he he has totally not noticed Hamid in a a ball on the other side of the Uh, dean's table okay I mean I can take the message for you it's alright okay uh, 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 Curie's just stood there kind of unconcernedly going yeah giving a sort of wave of the hand uh, go go, go nuts whatever Uh, Gideon is uh, uh, well um it's uh, it's, it's they're, they're they're locking down the university, uh, the, the 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 cult of Mars and 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 the uh, the, 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 the 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 meritocrat right. forces are uh, maybe you should kinda, give the message. Uh, uh, okay, because mm-hmm. I can't uh, hear a word you're saying yeah, over the muttering. Yeah, no, sure. Um, Clar- ele- elocution, uh-huh. mm-hmm. elocution. Yes, right. Uh, he heads into the room towards Curie and is still not actually pegged uh, Hamid on the far side of the table Hamid pulls himself just about together enough to stand up um, and he gives Grizzop a huge hug and kind of sobs into his shoulder a bit a hug back and I'm going to say uh, yeah so look death is hard and it's painful um, and I'm not going to pretend it's not a horrible thing there's a squeak from Gideon it it's, it's it's a <laughs> but it happens um, and we've got to move on with it uh, you know with your lives you know, you can't, you can't, you can't let it shut you down. Um, you've got to keep. You know, she was going after her dream or what she wanted to do, and you need to keep doing that for, you know, for her sake. Curie pipes up. I'm genuinely sorry that this has to happen right now, but we need to make some very quick plans. As it stands, the meritocratic forces are locking down the university because, as far as I am aware, is this correct, Gideon? Gideon's sort of now blanking her and staring, just wide-eyed at Hamid with no kind of. No ha- Hamid kind of... hasn't looked in his direction yet. Curie continues, it would seem that the city are less than impressed with the fact that a mage has uh, right, wonder why that a is, yeah. fear effect upon apparently the entire city as opposed to the opera, as we presumed. Uh, there is not a lot of time. OK. Is that our problem now? I mean, we, we did what you wanted. Have any of you dealt with the cult of Mars before? No. Actually, give me a knowledge religion, Grizzop. OK. You are going to get a circumstance bonus for the simple reason that you should know a bit anyway. Okay, so uh, that is a 16 plus the circumstance 16 bonus. plus your circumstance bonus, okay. The Cult of Mars are generally considered bad news. Not bad people, but bad for everyone around them. Their main mission is effectively establishing a perimeter around what used to be sort of the Mediterranean and Rome and all of the, all of the nastiness that is there. They have one sworn mission which is anything that is in there does not leave and anything that's undead and out there is quelled. However, unlike the Artemis lot where they kind of balance that with, you know, maybe helping the community a little bit, you know, occasionally making sure there's some kind of... Ba- no, no. The, the Mars people have a very specific task. They are sort of hyper-militaristic. Ooh, so they don't like the undead. And they hate, like, problematically so. They're kind of, of the trolley problem, you know. If you could steer the trolley and it would hit one zombie... 
but would also hit 30 babies. Yeah, stay the try. Yeah, no, hit that zombie. They're kind of a little Sasha bit... Sasha doesn't know this. Uh, you have no knowledge of this. Okay. Grizzop, you do. Yeah, because Artemis also hates undead, but not but, but, but like throw other people under the bus. Artemis so, is the kind of person who's like, oh, I don't really like undead, and then like watches Mars go off on one and is like, mm, yeah, but there's limits. Like, you know, rein it in. Calm down. Yeah. And again, Curie sort of piping up. I believe that it probably will affect you all. I would strongly suggest that you all make yourself scarce before you get caught into this situation. Hamid turns round, wipes off his eyes, looks around the room brilliantly, and just suddenly his face completely changes as he finally catches sight of Gideon. He goes, You! What are you doing here? Gideon just freezes. He's ashen and just freezes. There are the sounds of loud cries and sort of banging from within the building but outside of this room. Uh, Hamid, um, I, lots I, of like calls and cries and I think we should go. tune or what, that kind of what, thing. What's going on? I, th- I think we need to go. I think Einstein and Freud are sort of sharing a look with Curie and they're all just sort of giving one another nods and are starting to make preparations what, what like are you packing doing? things up and things. It's time that we leave. Why? Because if the entirety of Prague has decided that the university is at fault, how do you think this is going to go down? You know what? Maybe you are! You let one of your own try and enact one of the lost rituals of Rome, for God's sake! At which point, everyone roll me initiative. <laughs> seven. S- big big seven from Grizz up there. Yeah, with my initiative bonus of four. Wow. Which is a big one. Nice. How are we doing over there, Sasha? Fifteen. Fifteen? Better? <sighs> uh, Nineteen. Ooh. Okay, in that case then, Hamid, the doors... At the 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 main doors that you came in and that Gideon has just come in, burst open, and stood in the doorway are three full plate wearing, what are presumably cult of Mars um, followers. Their armor is dull; it does not shine. It has a sort of dusky red finish to it, but it looks more, if anything, like it's just covered in a red dust rather than you know mm. painted filigree. They have no markings. Sort of you like cannot the see faces, and each of them are wielding mahoosive weapons they're the kind of people that Bertie would get along with you know there's a great sword in there there's a great axe and uh, would they get along because if they're not shiny yeah that's not his thing let's put it this way unless disappointed in unless their armor you know is built to exaggerate i feel like Bertie would be on board with these people well he's definitely apollo not mars right oh yeah he's the apollo yeah yeah shiny and big um, Let's put it this way. Do you like a bad boy? Because if so, you're set with these armour-plated okay, men. Bertie might like them. Yeah. But um, they are all stood in the doorway, and basically w- w- the one in the front just yells, Everybody hold! Uh, and hold, we enter initiative. Hold, 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 okay. hold what? Hold what? What? Hamid, you are up. The men look like they are ready for a fight. A big fighty fight. Hamid is completely out of spells and doesn't even know what side he wants to be on. Mm -hmm. I hold my action. Okay. One of the guards holds himself in the doorway and braces to stop anyone leaving. The other two immediately approach Curie and Freud. They make it up to them and then they are having a scuffle. They are attempting to grapple them or something similar. Sasha, you are up. They've paid... The two that came in the room paid you... None of you any mind. The one who's in the doorway, though, is very much keeping an eye on everyone else. Heads over to stand by Brizop and Hamid and readies herself. Doesn't get the daggers out, but yeah, just readies. <laughs> and Grizzop? Uh Yeah, so I'm going to um, point to the symbol on my shield and go, Yeah, you're right, lads. Uh, I'm with our smith there with me. Again, you, you have gone largely ignored. It doesn't help that, like, it's very hard to make out facial expressions for someone who has a helm where so there's only a tiny slip. So this is to the guy in the, in the, uh, doorway. In the doorway. And sure. I'm going to start trying to walk past him. Say, so, come on. He immediately bars your way. Hey, look. That's What's your, the problem That'll be your oh, six yeah. seconds. Mm. Okay. On to the, uh, the members of faculty. All three of them act simultaneously, at least, like, in... You know, mechanically, they act simultaneously. The first thing that you see is a... And then Einstein teleports out of the room immediately. Freud manages, before the person has approached him, to begin um, casting some kind of spell. If you have uh, Knowledge Arcana, I'll let you figure out what he's doing. Yep. Oh, that's a bad roll. Uh, 12. 
some kind of enchantment. Yeah. <laughs> um, specifically, some kind of mind-altering effect. You don't know more than that. Um, he is backing away from the, um, the the guard that is trying to grapple him. And the guard does not look like they are falling for it. It's very much, you know, no! points at the guard who then just kind of approaches and looks ready to just clock him in the jaw. Mm. Curie, meanwhile, goes very, very still. Everyone give me a perception check. Oh, for goodness sake. I've got a one. Critical fail. Critical fail. Uh, 20. 20. Net, not natural. Yep. 12. 12. Okay. Sasha. Mm-hmm. Curie and Freud disappear. Every single guard is on their back. Whoa. Grizzop, you think you saw something move. Possibly, but faster than you could have ever seen. What do you mean something move? A faint blur in the air as every single person is on their back. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> Hamid, give me a knowledge arcana to go with your perception check. Uh, 30. What you just witnessed, and you are certain of this, yeah, is a, a max- 30, I is a <laughs> maximised, effectively, time stop cast by Curie. Yep. Looked That's like, what Bryn figured as well, yeah. people. So all of the guards are on their back. All of the faculty are gone. Gideon is exactly where you left. And all of the guards' weapons are in a neat pile <laughs> on the table in the middle of the room. Right. Right, we're out, guys. Like, drags yeah, no. them towards the... Like, over the guy that's now on the floor in the... I've seen the guy on, on the, the guards door. are beginning to get up. The guy on the door was also on his back. Yep. And, yeah, you could step over them. They are all getting to their feet, but they're going through that moment of... What just happened? Yeah. Pick up Hamid and step over the guard. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to stick you in initiative order for now. Mm-hmm. Hamid, it's your turn. Things are moving very quickly. Yeah. Uh, I can't think quick enough. Hamid does nothing. Okay. In which case, then, the guards, all of them, their move is, you know, getting to their feet and mm-hmm. making. The, the guy in the doorway manages to get to his feet and he's sort of vaguely trying to block but he has no weapons mm. so he's literally just casting his arms wide <laughs> like a uh, hockey yeah he's, he's yeah he looks hey! like <laughs> like a goalie <laughs> yeah, he, 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 you know hey, what that's, over there. Th- there's a weird psychic interference moment where yeah that's that's the perfect reference and mm. Sasha somehow knows that mm. um, meanwhile the other guards are making their way to the middle of the table to get their weapons they grab them and then turn outwards all of their attention is now very much focused on you three remaining mm-hmm. and Sasha you are now up there is a guard doing a poor job of defending a double doorway on his own. Okay, I grab Hamid yep. and try an acrobatics through that. It could work. Give me the roll, and then we'll see how it plays out. I mean, yeah, I have a very high acrobatics. You might be taking thing. a penalty I by I'm pulling taking, a, a I, I assume I'm taking toe. a penalty, but I also have... You do have ridiculous acrobatics. Okay, so that was 25. 25? Ooh. That was a that was a counter roll of a, a hot three. Okay, hot three. So He's it's still zilly. it's still fairly close. Hamid Ooh. is giving you nothing. He is a a sack of potatoes that you are pulling. Eventually, you resort to. In fact, how do you how do you manage to get past the guard? Is just slow on the uptake. That's how you I get just past him. Grab him, um, <laughs> like hands under the armpits, and like leap forward and it's a double doorway yes. so the guy is trying to but she she jumps up and basically bounces off ah. the, the doorway you fake him out like hinge and then like jumps past you, you make it off past the wall. successfully Grizzop like, Grizzop come on you are up okay I'm going to try and use diplomacy mm-hmm. to basically talk my way out of this as okay. a paladin of Artemis so I rolled a 14 mm-hmm. I am afraid that the chances of it passing are slim but mm-hmm. I am giving you a fair try that, that's, a, that's a no. Look, okay, you've got to deal with those mages. Look, I'm with Artemis, you're with Mars, we're both on the same side, all right? So just let me get through, you can deal with this properly, and, uh, you know, I'll just be, I'll be completely out of your hair, okay? I'm just going to try and walk forward. So, Hamid, you're up. Look, we, we don't need to do this, we're not your enemies! I kind of wiggle my way free of Sasha and just empty-handed, hands out, and walk towards the other empty-handed guys. Goes, we don't need to fight each other. Come on, Hamid. <laughs> he never learns. Just, we just managed to escape, and these two talky McTalk faces Hamid, with their I, talky I, 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 faces. I, 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 I hadn't escaped. And their faces are talking Grizzle. like that's ever wise. <laughs> what is your combat maneuver defense, Ben? Seventeen. Seventeen. The guard. 
successfully grappled you. He reaches around. You kind of... You're, it's it's not an easy one because you're very small and he's quite cumbersome. He resorts to just full-on bear-hugging you with his armor. Woomph! Right around you and okay. li- lifts you bodily from the floor. Sure. Meanwhile, the other two guards, um, having fetched their weapons from the table, immediately set off pursuing Hamid and Sasha. <sighs> And the way that time, like the way that the distances work out, they are upon you, but still not able to attack. They had there's too much distance are for they them to make up. Through, they are passing Grizzop, who is currently grappled. They're running from the center of the room to the doorway where we are. Okay. Sasha, you are up. Grizzop is grip- grappled, and you are now facing off against the one with a massive axe. Hamid is vaguely facing off against the one with. I was trying to talk to the one who was grappling but yeah now there's another one nearer i guess i'm by facing off yeah. they're facing what? off against you you can face off against whoever yeah, yeah, yeah. you so choose what trying your massively successful talky skills <laughs> sasha oh, you're up what are you doing just run hamid and like throws him away and then gets the daggers out and i suppose somersaults through one of their squares and stabs him in the back of the neck go for it give me the acrobatics check yeah. weaving your using your ridiculously op feet yeah but i got a four Plus 12, so 16. As I see Sasha go to do this, I'm just going to say, Sasha, no! Uh, You succeed. Ah. They are very, very, like, armoured. Not so much on the quick. Not not how they're rolling. So, yeah. So I'm basically standing on the guy's shoulders and stabbing him in the neck. I'll allow that. Yeah. I'll allow that. You managed to acrobat yourself on top of on their extremely broad shoulders mm. and go stabby stab. D4, I think? But you'll get your sneak attack. Oh, right. Okay, that's nice. Oh, I've rolled a two. A two? I have a good news. Oh, plus eight. Oh, plus eight. I have good news and bad news. There is satisfying resistance as you stab downwards Mm. onto solid plate metal. Oh. Bing! It does not penetrate. Their armor's good. Grizzop, you are currently grappled. You can make either, yeah, an opposed check or... Tell me what you want to do, and I can just make the maths happen. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so I am going to um, try and... So with plate armour, there's a gap between the crotch and the leg. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm going to basically kick this guy in where <laughs> in, in his hip joint mm-hmm. and say, look, you don't have to do this. Stop being awful. And then Meanwhile, make an escape the soldier's arc. yelling, silence, monster. Start making escape artist tech. Yep. Uh, 18. 18? Ooh. Yep, yeah, you succeed. Bang, ah, mm, he drops you. Come on, Sasha, Hamid. And start running. Yeah. Okay. So, Hamid, you're up. Uh, I'm making a diplomacy roll. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Stop it. No. 30. 30? Yep. Still, still disagree with it as a decision, both as a person and a character. Give me your absolute best and I will let you know whether you've succeeded once you've finished. We are the people who just took down the necromancer starting the ritual. We are not part of the university. We want to help you. Stop attacking us. Hamid's quite highly strung at the moment. (laughs) The one who's facing off against Hamid does, as far as you can see, appear to hesitate. You have no idea whether anyone else is reacting, but the one who was there sort of, you know, winding up for a big heart, big, big hit, you know, arms right up behind the head, just kind of kind of hesitates a little bit, as unsure as, as, as a big plate metal person can look. Everyone kind of goes still, and then the doors open at the opposite end of the corridor. What now? And I'll take a break there. And welcome back. The doors have opened and there's a figure stood at the other end. They approach slowly. It was Oscar Wilde, I swear to God. And... Please be Oscar Wilde. Please be Oscar Wilde. They put their hands up. It's not Oscar Wilde. Ah. (laughs) All of the guards, however, stand to and arrange themselves at the corridor. And you see... Again, they're in full plate armour. They do not, however, appear to have quite the same hulking stature of of the other people. They're a little bit more... Are they wearing the same symbology? Yes, by which I mean no symbology apart from dusky red, very serviceable armour. Yeah, sure, whatever. They approach, but they're they're a shorter person, and their helm is up. You see a um, late middle-aged man 
is you know on the other side of the visor he has uh, graying hair he has an incredibly severe expression and he what approaches... historical figure will this be place bets now <laughs> <laughs> He placed bets. Caesar. You think Caesar? We have okay. We have Caesar on the board. Caesar on the board. Who else we got on the board? A- Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. No, <laughs> no you made your choice. No, Abraham, no, it's terrible. Abraham Lincoln. There's no America. It's some some famous 19th century general. Oh, I don't know my Wellington. history well enough. Wellington. Oh, it could be Wellington. That's a good no, shout. He's British. And so we have. Last but not least, what's your bet? I've got no idea. Okay. Is it Napoleon? It could be Napoleon. It could be. It could be Napoleon. I think it's not quite important enough to be Napoleon. So the figure approaches, and uh, it would be really unoriginal of Alex for it to be Napoleon. <laughs> and so the figure approaches. He did say he was quite sure. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Me. <laughs> oh Napoleon my goodness. says <laughs> the guards begin drawing their weapons and kill the entire party. Aww. I don't know how it happened, but I don't regret it. <laughs> um, so the figure approaches, and they are not Napoleon. <laughs> By which I mean they are, you know, written as Napoleon, but no, he's got a I'd be tempted it. to go with Napoleon because he was actually not that short. No, but no, it, it's it's not Napoleon. In fact, none of you recognise the figure, and they approach, they come close, and then they just stand reviewing you all for a moment. <laughs> Three stars, <laughs> <laughs> but it Is reads it? like a four. <laughs> Is this person Thanks, a Scotsman? James. <laughs> yeah. The cult it's of w- Mars would appreciate your cooperation as we take control of the university yeah right I can guarantee no harm to yourselves if you will merely cooperate fine could have opened with that uh, well what are we being asked to cooperate with and the cult of Artemis will be hearing about this Sasha says from still atop the shoulders of the guard who stood too yeah, <laughs> yeah. What, are we, what are we cooperating with our investigations as to the events that have just transpired. Well, we'll... well, good news! We can tell you everything that happened! We were there! Excellent. <sighs> Is everyone okay with me doing a quick time jump to a new location? Yeah, fine. So. Yeah, I can't believe that you've let us get locked up in. Pr- in no, no, the guards okay. escort all of you to what appear to be some kind of retrofitted like seminar rooms or something similar retrofitted it's basically as prison cells it's basically a small classroom where yeah there's a there's a table in the middle of the room yeah. and uh, there's there's a chair on either side and each of you they no one is hurting you like the the supervisor whoever it was I mean, my pride has been very has clear been hurt. the guards have been kind of posturing but again like it doesn't seem to be carrying any water I'll uh, keep reminding the one that I kicked uh, whether his leg hurts or not <laughs> <laughs> he's he's disciplined enough not to take it out on you but not enough to not show it yeah like we, um, we could have been miles away by now, but you two with your talking so all of you is that in character <laughs> yeah what do you <laughs> mean with my talking. Well, you just were trying to talk to them about Because I can't out. just barge past. Have you seen me? You just get past Slam people. They're big and slow. Not everyone's you. All right? Slam You're pretty, pretty fast. Two. You are all in separate rooms. Ugh. Okay. You have all been put into these rooms. You're not tied down. You're not chained or anything. There is a guard outside the door. Well, that's fine then. And I will lead with Hamid you find yourself sat opposite the gentleman who told everyone to back off basically Hamid I believe yes correct I believe you were present at the opera correct yes I was I believe unless I am mistaken that you were transformed into some kind of monster uh, the necromancer t- uh, cast some sort of spell on me that had an, uh, some sort of strange interaction, uh, but it wore off once he was dead. The uh, supervisor, let's call him, fails his sense motive fabulously. A likely story. So, excuse me, what do you mean a likely story? I, I feel like you under the impression that I'm going to be answering your questions. I'm not. Yeah, but the least you could do is extend some professional courtesy, not make sarcastic comments when I'm telling you the truth. This isn't the first time that you've been associated with a potential set of No, murders. I've had to save the world twice, despite the fact I'm the least qualified person there could be. If people like you did your job properly, it wouldn't be necessary. So, just to be perfectly candid, you were seen in the form of a monster, in the company of a known necromancer, with a history 
of, uh, shall we say, violent tendencies. Well, the necromancer. Yourself. Violent tendencies? Oh, for and a known God's sake. link to a currently missing member of the student body. So what? I repeat. What do you know? Why were currently you there? Currently missing member of the student body? Who are you talking about? And how are you involved in the disappearance of Liliana Bikos? Disappearance? I didn't realise she was missing. She broke up with me six months ago. I haven't seen her since. I'm going to cut to... What's that going to do with anything? Grizz up. You are currently being interviewed. I'm pacing, unless I'm forced into oh, the chair. Oh, you're not forced into the chair, but you are being interviewed by a huge woman, just massive. And the second that she walked into the room, she has shown you nothing but disgust. So, creature... Is up. I didn't know we were naming you now. So, can you please explain to me what you can regarding the actions of your master, the necromancer Kafka, at the opera? Uh, can I see your manager, please? No. I really have to complain about the customer service. I'm fairly certain that as a lesser minion, you're not earning I any rights. I am a paladin of Artemis. Okay. So maybe you can go and get my superiors, and they can talk to your superiors... And you can get out of my face. She leans into your face. I'm pacing, so she's going to have to twirl. <laughs> she, she's, she is doing so. She is attempting to get in your face. She's I not very good. I will start laughing at her. <laughs> You're trying to be intimidating to me. <laughs> Are you supposed to be big she's, and scary? She's not taking this very well. <laughs> oh no, me! Just a lesser little creature. <laughs> she picks. She physically picks up the entire heavily made desk. Oh yeah, come on! Bring breaks it. it against a wall. But it's very clear that she has not laid a finger or touched you or put you in any actual harm. Boom! Am I still supposed to be scared? Cut to Sasha. You are sat opposite a guard who is still wearing their full plate. From inside the armour, a very measured tone. Do you understand that you are likely to be killed soon? As an undead minion, it is our responsibility and our oath to eliminate your kind. Do you have anything to say? I mean, she doesn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> that silence, just for the sake of listeners, because we don't have all day, stretches like a long time. We can keep asking questions. Is... Cut back to Hamid with the, 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 the supervisor. Look, do you want to know everything? I'll tell you everything. I'll start at the beginning. So, I got kicked out of Cambridge. Yes, Great. you did. You know about that. Fantastic. It was awful. It was the worst moment of my life. I became a mercenary. Okay? I joined a mercenary company. We got a job. We got a job from the meritocrats. We're trying to help. We're trying to be on the right side of these things. We were sent to Paris. We investigated the situation in Paris. The situation in Paris was so completely screwed up beyond belief that nothing good could come of it. And we made the best of it. Okay? And I, you probably know what happened there, so I won't go into more detail. But, oh my God, it was ridiculous. And, yes... Some bad stuff happened, but we did the right thing. Then we came here, and things went from bad to worse. We found out there was a rogue mage running around, trying to enact the lost rituals of Rome. So we got involved. We tried to stop him. We got ended up in the opera house where he was conducting his ritual. And I lost not only my oldest friend, but also my sister, trying to defeat him. And he is now dead, thanks to me and my team. So why don't you show me some... God damn respect for once! This entire tirade happens and you are completely stonewalled. So to repeat the question, how are you linked to the disappearance of Liliana Bikos? Skip to Grizzop. The woman at this point is just yelling at you and it's all just idle threats like whoever is into 
interrogating you is just the worst. I'm, I am going to crush you. I'm, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna crush you okay. into a ball, Ooh. and then I'm gonna, I'm Ooh. gonna, I'm gonna ram you up yeah, well, you yourself. I'm gonna be and then, up myself. And then I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna where are you gonna uh, put the ball after that? I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Tiny I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what hey, I'll do. Hey, I'll, I'll hey. throw the. <laughs> You're gonna invent a new game. You're gonna invent a new sport. Goblin ball, are you? You're gonna invent a new sport. It just keeps going and going, and she just bites just every time. Cut to Sasha. After maybe ten minutes since we last saw you, is he still asking questions? The guard reaches up, adjusts adjusts their helmet, and puts their hands back, waiting for a response from you. Uh, her foot occasionally taps the floor. <laughs> so, I am going to accelerate time a little bit. I believe that you can all see which direction all three of these Wait, conversations she yawns is and going. Stretches. Oh, right, I'll take that down. Sorry. <laughs> right. Can you give me a yawn and stretch check and I'll counter uh, it with a sense motive? <laughs> you're not tired. You're not tired. It's been a long day, mate. <laughs> So, but she doesn't say that. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> Give them nothing. Like this can't be the first time that Sasha's been interrogated by someone. I mean, I don't think she's been caught by the police before. Or maybe, maybe. Probably when other people dropped the ball. Other people did, yeah. But <laughs> just waiting for waiting for the the ones that have been bought to turn up. So I'm going to accelerate the interrogation mainly with Hamid because that's where there's some actual back and forth happening. Um, I mean, there's a lot of back and forth happening. And, yeah, but you know what I mean. So Hamid. Uh, ha- Hamid collapses into the chair. He is utterly exhausted and you can see it on his face. He goes, It has been a long day. I know nothing about the disappearance of Liliana. I didn't know she was missing. We were in a relationship for quite a while. We broke up six months ago. I haven't seen her since then. He starts crying again, but in a much calmer way than he was crying. The supervisor gives Hamid some time to cry, takes a few notes, then leaves the room. All of your interrogators eventually leave the rooms. Um, The uh, one with Sasha gives what might have been actually an appreciative nod and then heads out, the having not said anything beyond that first sentence. The one with Grizzop is eventually dragged, <laughs> literally foaming from the mouth by the guard who was outside. Come on with your I'll, I'll, I'll get, get you! Get you. I'll get you! Just, just, High school! High school! <laughs> just frothing at the mouth is physically dragged from the room. Eventually a lot of time passes. Did they take my Masterwork Thieves tools? You are all in the rooms with all of your equipment. Your equipment wasn't taken. <laughs> Pick the freaking lock, mate. Okay, give me the same... Late, wait, I'll lay into, wait until night time. Okay. So, after a decent length of time, it must be at this point, what, like... Three in the morning, okay. something like that. No, definitely pick the lock, then. Uh, give me a disabled device check. Uh, 23. Give me a stealth check. 24. You successfully pick the lock. Listen at the door. You hear the distinct sound of a set of keys being put into the lock and the door being relocked. And then someone quietly through the door goes, Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good response. <laughs> Kick the door. <laughs> the door is now kicked. Yeah. Um, that'll show him. That's like the, the prison guard, uh, uh, the, like the no-no can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why did they leave a lock on, on that side? <laughs> what, who, who can you say? It's almost like they're just making use of rooms that are already there. Yeah, foolish. So, eventually, again, at around about four in the morning, the doors are all opened by um, just generic guards in faceless armour it might be different people, it might be the same you don't know, but they are all open at the same time, you're all on the same corridor and you are all gestured out into the corridor simultaneously Finally I've been waiting here for ages Like walk really quickly past the guard. Sure, they don't interfere. Hamid trudges he looks dishevelled Yep. Sasha is completely silent You make it to the end of the corridor there's a figure at the end of the corridor. Oscar Wilde. Who's this? Seven. Now? The number seven. 
What's in the box? Because the character... It's a drawing from a patent. <laughs> the character... Figure one. It's <laughs> an academic diagram. It's a pie chart. It's a pie chart. Is that a pie chart? It is not a pie oh. chart. Oh. <laughs> there is, however, a very well-dressed, familiar-looking uh, individual at the end of the corridor. Yep. Trouble does seem to follow you all around, doesn't it? Who are you? Oh, you've got another one. Hello. Uh, yeah, what? This is the uh, current employer of the London and other London Outstanding Mercenary Group. You've got a new name. It's on the paperwork. You can't read your memos. I'm a very busy man. I like it, though. It's it's punchy. Who are you? Oscar Wilde. Grizzop Act Act Amsterdam. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Grizzop Trick Act Amsterdam, please. <laughs> Again? Hamid, Hamid says it right. I know. Brit I know. says it wrong. <laughs> I know. It's important that let's, Hamid says it let's right. Let's try that again. Oscar Wilde. Grizzop Trick Act Amsterdam. Yep, yeah, that's it. Grizzop Oscar. Hello. You all right? Yeah. Well looking at the Mars guards. Sort of. Where's the big one? Come on, you probably already know. He's dead. Thanks. He gives a kind of shoulder shrug. shrug. Shall we go do this then? What are we, what, what are we doing? Sorting it out, I assume. Come on then. As always. The one thing you can do right now is not condescend to us, Oscar. We have done all the hard work. I've lost two of the most important people to me. And we had to save the world again while you were nowhere to be seen. So, yes, I appreciate your help. I appreciate you're here. And I am grateful that you're about to help sort us out. But you can leave out the condescension right now. Thank you. If you want a management course, the Temple of Artemis actually does quite a good one. I like the new one. He's funny. Right. <clears throat> if you'll join me. He walks and then gestures to another seemingly empty room. There are no guards here. He's walked you a decent enough distance that, like, the, the Mars madness seems to have been largely put aside. I take it... He just finds an absent, like, empty-looking office. It's quite a nice office, but it's clearly it's just taken his fancy, so he's gone in. I take it that we're not on the way to my execution. What? No, you would be amazed at how keen the Mars lot are to kill you. Yeah. It is... Oh! Yeah. It's just one of those things, honestly. One track minds. He sort of lounges on the desk. <clears throat> so, I probably should start that again. I do apologise that. Uh, Which bit do you apologise for, Mister mm, Wild? The, the detention by people who weren't me. Um, I could have probably taken a better tone. Um, I think that's that's largely it. Mm. The whole not telling us what was going on in Paris and then keeping on saying, oh, I'll explain it when we get there, and then putting us on a ship that you... you How did you get out of Paris, even? Then you turn up so late that it's not even helpful. Do you have any idea how hard it is getting from Paris to... Anyway. So, it would seem you've got yourselves mixed up in something again. Uh, with the exception of yourself, uh, Grizzop, have you considered um, mercenary work? It's very lucrative. Yeah, they've already offered. Oh, fantastic. That does make things easier. Right. He's sassy. I like him. You stop talking about me in the third person, please. So... He won't stop. Right. As it stands, what are you aware of the situation in Prague at the moment? Uh, like, there's a bunch of people here that are angry we got rid of some zombies. Hamid is, like, in quite a bad way, for good reason. And we're down a tank. If, if you can find me a, someone to flank, that would be very well, useful. Things are fractionally more complicated than that, Sasha, as is normally the case when we have these conversations. I'm afraid that it would appear that the entirety of Prague was subjected to uh, what I believe were, he checks some paperwork, the fear effects from uh, the necromancer known as Kafka. I'm also afraid that they haven't taken kindly to it. And the meritocratic forces, in conjunction with the cult of Mars, have taken matters into their own hands. So what, we're in trouble this Did the rest of the council escape, or did you manage to catch them? Ooh, that one lands. Ooh, that one lands with uh, Wild. I'm not even going to get a sense motive for that one. That one one hit. The three surviving members of the uh, university faculty are uh, at large, shall we say, for now. So what happens when powerful wizards get out of hand? Yes, it is. Which is why the meritocratic forces and the cult of Mars have stepped in to uh, make sure that, that doesn't happen anymore. Mm. Apologies, by the way, for the way that you were treated. I realise that the cult of Mars are a little bit... I mean, it's classic, them. A yes. bit killy. 
They are, yes. They're that's, just idiots. I mean, it's not the word I'd have chosen, but it has a certain ring to it, a bit killy, yes. Well, nonetheless, um, it would seem that the situation is, is quite bad. And uh, what more we do also, I, I don't know if you've been made aware, Hamid, um, a previous contact of yours is a bit wrapped up in all of this as well. Who, how? So it would appear that um, Liliana, I, I don't know if I'm saying that right, I've only ever seen it written. Yes. May have been working with Kafka as part of her PhD. <laughs> Work? I mean, studying under him, maybe. As far as we're able to trace the timeline, a couple of weeks ago, her and Kafka, who have been working rather extensively together on some kind of research project I'm not familiar with, were seen, and it's believed that they entered Newton's study. Kafka returned, she did not, and Kafka's... Newton's study? What's Newton got to do with any of this? Um, I was hoping that you might know, if I'm honest. Didn't Bertie say something about Newton's study? Hmm? Well, I don't know. all I can say is that we're we're really trying to settle this situation because. Um, did you did you say she didn't emerge again from Newton's study? Yes, that's what I said. We better go there then. Yeah. I, I mean, not right now, dear God, not Pro- right now. Probably not. I believe we should probably continue to converse. Where is my sister's body? Is it? I need to take it back to my parents. Her husband is currently in possession of the um, remains. Oh, he's here. Oh, good. I didn't know if he'd been travelling with her. Uh, he'd I actually... probably see him. Yes, he'd actually um, come see the opera. Um, not this evening, thank goodness. But nonetheless, he is, <sighs> he's currently in communication with your family, I believe. I don't know more than that. Not a lot of time's passed, if I'm honest. No, well, it... I mean, hours at most. But unfortunately, now is not the time for us to uh, dwell because things are still afoot. Another city to flee. Another world to save. Uh, I mean, I need to report back. Well, as it stands, um, the entirety of the city of Prague is very much of the opinion that Bolasmok should most likely raise the uh, university much the way that uh, Eiffel's Folly was. You might that is ridiculous! You can't... If the head of the organisation went back and should be removed, and new leadership should be put in place, but the student body is not responsible for the mistakes of their superiors. I you can't agree. run a world like that. I agree. Clean house. I agree, which is why we're here. But part of this is putting all of this stuff to bed. And as it stands, things are getting quite bad just all over. I so, imagine so. So what do you want from us, Oscar? Like, we have had a very long day. There were ghosts. Zombies. There were zombies. There were pits of zombies. There there was fighting giant monsters in the pitch dark. A and, super powerful necromancer. And well I can't that, see in the, the dark. Uh, great job on that one. Yeah, right. He very was a monster for one. a while. I still am a monster, apparently. And everyone's been like those mean old... Mars people were calling Grizz of a monster. Oh, we, well, yeah. we, oh, want, we want to sleep. Will you? We want a nap. We want... We want... A, 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 to know where to go next. Yeah, could you get to the point? I'm fairly certain that the research that Liliana and Kafka were working on is directly tied to the simulacrum. I need you to fetch Liliana. The simulacrum? Right. Oh, you mentioned it. I did yes. tell you that's Sorry, what we... Okay, I mean, how about... We discuss all of this over... Breakfast in the morning. I was going to say a whiskey, but yeah, that that works too. <laughs> Breakfast whiskey's fine. Yeah. And I think I'll end the episode there. As always, thanks for listening, and I'm, I'm pretty certain things might improve eventually. Mm. Like, this is still the pulpy fun season. Whee! Pulpy <laughs> fun season, guys. <laughs> in- yeah, I'm having so much fun. Pulpy in- fun. You can tell. Explorers. I hope to vent you game. <laughs> Zombie now! If, if you could, if you could just stop working up my character so much that I feel the intense need to swear, that'd be great. Can we, can we just get down to that level? Please Bye, guys. don't get him to the point where he actually throws up in reality. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.
Rusty Quill Gaming is a podcast distributed by RustyQuill.com and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial International License. Today's episode was recorded and produced by Alexander J. Newell. To comment on episodes, make donations, and view links, images, videos, and show notes, visit RustyQuill.com. Rate and review us on iTunes. Visit us on Facebook. Tweet us on Twitter at the Rusty Quill, or email us at mail at RustyQuill.com. Thanks for listening. Uh, I, need to, I need a pencil, genuinely, because I don't want to do this on the edit. Thank you. Just got you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a spare one just in case. You, you give me presenter blue balls. Oh, thank you. I had an intro and it's gone. Right. <laughs>